Hey, how you guys doing? Uh, before we get to the topic at hand, um, I'm talking about some future videos uh, in the coming weeks, uh, a week or two. Now, I, I did talk about, um, I recently got some uh, Presonus um, studio monitors. Um, I'm waiting on some shielded, shielded cabling, um, balanced cabling before I uh, finish or even work on the video because uh, we also uh, upgraded some of our audio sound system as well. Um, so I also uh, have an M Audio Air 192 uh, 4 input or 2 input 2 output uh, right here uh, that I get, just got in yesterday. And so I'm working on that as well. And so we're going to come out with three videos, uh, one using uh, both of them together as my workflow and uh, two other ones, which I'm going to talk about each one individually, uh, a lot more in depth. And we're actually using the uh, M-Audio uh, USB interface right now as we speak through uh, this microphone right here. Now, my... Uh, Mackie mixer eventually stopped working, which is one of the reasons why I'm getting this. I decided to go with a USB interface rather than um, uh, a mixer. So uh, look for that in up the upcoming weeks. And of course, you can listen to the uh, audio sound as well um, for one of the upcoming video. So of course, right now we're going to be talking about uh, utilizing... Uh, Big Sur Time Machine and uh, the use of uh, the new file system with Big Sur, which is, of course, APFS uh, using Time Machine. Now, the reason for this video is because initially I was using this. Um, this is an older um, USB 3 um, portable drive, which is, uh, of course, Toshiba, uh, which utilizes the USB 3 bus which I've been using for a time machine. Now, when I started using this, I was like, I, you know, I knew I had to back up my main machine. And so I went ahead and grabbed this. This is the one that I had readily available. And it was kind of old to begin with. It, this is, of course, an older uh, two and a half inch mechanical drive. And it was pretty old when I had it. So I'm like, well, let me just go use that for now. And now it's several years later and it's uh, even older. So I decided to go with uh, something uh, much newer, a uh, little bit more reliable. So uh, I decided, uh, believe it or not, I found this at Walmart, which is the EM, EMTEC uh, 256 gigabyte X200 external SSD drive right here. And I'll kind of focus this in real quick. Uh, hopefully you guys can see it. Okay. And uh, which I'm going to which I've been utilizing for the last couple of days as um, a time machine. And just to show you how small and this thing is extremely lightweight as well, which kind of worries me because um, the cable I came that came with it, the US uh, the USB three cable was so stiff um, when I had to attach the drive, moving it around is actually moving the drive around as well. So. Uh, we decided uh, to use it with this um, flexible USB-C cable right here. So uh, it, the stiff cable wouldn't move the, the drive around as I was connecting. Sometimes it would actually fall off the, uh, the table. So we're utilizing with this. So when I was thinking about it, I was like, well, of course, we, I knew we had the new file system. Um, since I'm using an SSD drive, why not use the new APFS file system with this? It does have the distinct advantages over using um, HFS uh, plus uh, with the previous uh, time machine. Of course, there's both pros and cons with that. We're going to look all that in a nutshell here very shortly, and uh, we'll be right back. How you doing, uh, guys? Um, we're here on my uh, uh, Mac Pro desktop, and um, before I show you uh, some of the uses with Time Machine with APFS on Big Sur, uh, I want to talk about some of the pros and cons first. And um, there's many uh, topics on the internet, uh, articles, and so I want to talk about some of the pros and cons. Uh, big advantage, uh, which are reason why I wanted to use APFS file system over the old one, and um, and this is one of the articles from Apple Gazette, by the way. There's many others. And uh, these are some of the biggest advantages is uh, faster speed, uh, security, less corruption, and less crashing compared to uh, HFS. 
It's a more model, modern file system. Another thing it can do um, that HFS can't is the use of snapshots. So you can um, do a snapshot and revert to that particular snapshot uh, any time that it saves it. Um, uh, when you use Time Machine, it'll do a snapshot every time you start it up if you're not using an automatic mode. Every time it does a backup, whether hourly, daily, weekly, or monthly, it will do a uh, snapshot. And then uh, when you're going to restore it, uh, you can restore your system to that prior snapshot depending on the day uh, day of the week and all that so you can do that as well another big advantage there are some disadvantages to this as well in fact Big Sur was the first um, OS to utilize APFS in Time Machine you couldn't with Catalina or prior versions even though we had uh, APFS for a couple of years now you couldn't utilize it in Time Machine and Catalina and some of the advantages with this um, not supported by older operating systems um, uh, which I kind of talked with uh, with Time Machine. Uh, here it says the APFS is not compatible with all OS X or older Sierra versions of Mac OS. Um, and also with data recovery, you have to do some data recovery. It's different than APFS. It's uh, quite a bit more harder than using the older style HFS file system as well. So, um, but more than likely, there's more advantages and disadvantages uh, to this. And we're going to look at Time Machine the way I'm using it. Now, initially, when I uh, formatted an APFS and did the first backup, it takes the longest because it has to back up the entire drive. And usually, when you start it again afterward to do incre incremental backups, then you. It, it's a uh, much faster because you don't have to do the entire drive like the first time. So uh, we're going to uh, open up preferences for the time machine. Uh, now, even though I like time machine where the um, worst aspects is you can't control when it does a backup. Once you set it to automatic, you can't control when it starts. Uh, it does it automatically. For instance, if I uh, do it automatically, it'll do it every um, do it every hour, every every day, every 24 hours, every week, and every month. So you can't set the time or date when it does this, and you could be in a big project and it, you're going to get a big slowdown because it's backing up, so that's a big issue. There are ways around this, and um, uh, using paid, even free versions, um, uh, for instance, Time Machine Editor, and most of these applications utilize... Um, they don't actually back up themselves. All they do is tell when, uh, tell um, Time Machine when to back up, and that's it. Uh, specific, you can pick the time, the date, and I'm going to show you that here. Now, that's the way I usually time I use my Time Machine anyway. I'll never set it on automatic. I'll just leave it uh, up like this if I need to use it. Uh, let's say I have a major um, operating system update. I'll do a backup first. I'll uh, go to the um, taskbar and I'll say uh, backup now and then it'll uh, back up my machine and uh, like I said uh, major uh, operating system upgrades um, program updates drivers and things of those nature I'll back up first before or even after like I install it and I want to save it as a backup and of course then it will take a snapshot in APFS if you have to revert back to that particular moment there are um i'm going to cover one free version of a uh, time machine backup that you can use um one of which is the uh, time machine editor and let me bring that up now like i said most of these don't back up themselves they only tell time machine is when to back up and that's it so it's more of a scheduling app which is very uh useful and um, here uh, with the Time Machine Editor, you can uh, create snapshots every hour. You can choose when to back up. Uh, here it says when active. And then you can also set um, a time when it backs up. And then you can also do an um, interval. Uh, you can tell how many hours, um, day or weekly. 
In fact, I'd probably, if, it, if anything, I'd probably do weekly. And then calendar intervals, um, you can, uh, I guess, uh, set a date. And uh, let me see every day, uh, days of the week right here. And then you set it, you forget, you apply, and uh, go from there. And there's um, many other ones you can go. In fact, we'll go into um, the App Store real quick. There's two in particular. And uh, now one's a, a paid version. Uh, two, these are the two of the best ones, I think, is the uh, Backup Scheduler, which I would prefer over this other one right here. It doesn't get very good, many good reviews, actually. This one I like more, but the reason I didn't get this one is because you have to download and install a script file to uh, uh, allow it to work. But it does have more options than the uh, Time Machine Editor. Um, and um, just to show you some of the screenshots. Now, I think this one is for, um, it's almost $7, $6.99, which isn't much. And uh, I think it gives you some more options. Um, Better, better, better de developed as well. So, uh, okay, that's my uh, breakdown of using Time Machine um, APFS file system on Big Sur. So, thanks for watching, and see you guys later.